an infrared camera can be a great asset in your electronics toolkit. So let's find out more. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. We do a lot of electronics work on this channel, both making our own circuit-based projects and working with other devices such as retro consoles and computers. Now with all of these, fault finding in the electronic circuits can be a challenging process. So having an array of good test equipment is essential to help identify and fix the problems. Now one piece of equipment that I hadn't really considered until now is an infrared camera. Now these are cameras that work in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum, so that means that they can basically see heat. Now as objects get hotter, they transmit larger amounts of infrared radiation, and then the camera, and I have one of these little uh, plug-in USB cameras here, um, these can then detect that radiation. So th this data then can be processed to produce effectively a heat map of the scene that you're looking at. Now this might seem unrelated to electronics at first, but if you think about current flowing in a circuit, it basically passes through components, and these components either extract or dissipate power, which generally ends up turning into heat, so hopefully you can see where this is going. The heat map that an infrared camera produces basically shows you where electrical energy is being dissipated in your circuit. Now, quite often this energy dissipation is perfectly normal. For, for example, if you try top, touching the top of a processor in your PC while it's working hard on the game, you'll soon realise just how much heat some of these components can actually dump. But from a fault-finding point of view, we can use this heat map to find areas where more heat is being generated than there should be. So, for example, I've got a resistor here just wired up across a power supply. At the moment, I'm just running it off 5 volts, and this 470 ohm resistor is drawing about sort of um, 7 milliamps, and everything's fine. And if I take a little temperature reading here, so that little point is where I'm currently sensing my temperature, if I take a reading, we're running at about 30 degrees. So why can I simulate that circuit piece of circuit going wrong? So either um, we're, we're basically going to increase the current here. So either we've got a, an incorrect voltage being fed into this, perhaps our power supply is, is going uh, on the blink a wee bit, um, or our resistor is starting to break down uh, and lose some of its resistance for some reason. But either way, we're getting the current now increasing. Um, you can see now that the power being dissipated in our resistor is increasing, and therefore the temperature is increasing. So we're now running up around the 80, 90 degrees. And again, that, that would be some indicator that there is something wrong with this particular component or the power supply to this component, or, or something in this area is not as it should be. So using an infrared camera will let us quickly identify potential areas on our circuit board that could be failing in some way. Now there are a range of infrared cameras available on the market, ranging from around £50 or $50 up to a few thousand pounds or dollars. Now, now luckily, a company called Thermal Master were kind enough to send me one of their P2 mobile phone cameras for review. So let's take a look at this device, um, its specifications and how it works. So the Thermal Master P2 is billed by the company as the world's second smallest infrared camera. Now obviously Thermal Master also make the world's smallest um, infrared camera as well. Um, but in the box then, um, you do get the camera itself in a smart carry and protective case, a manual, and a USB-C extension cable. So if you look at the camera, there is a USB-C plug on one edge of it here, and that's designed then to either fit directly into your mobile phone, or you can use this extension cable to effectively have the camera on the end of a wire and then connect it up to your mobile phone as well. Now, the idea of plugging it into your mobile phone removes the need then for any display or image processing hardware actually in the camera. And that of course brings down the price uh, for these types of units uh, when compared to the fully self-contained handheld cameras. 
So, so on that front, uh, the price, the P2, it, it retails for around about $250 or £250. And this puts it into the lower mid-range price bracket. Uh, and there are a few other mobile phone-based cameras on the market. Now, to get the device up and running, you simply need to download the Thermal Master camera app onto your Android phone, or you can use it on your PC. And then you just simply connect it to that device, either plugging it directly into a USB port or using some sort of USB extension cable. Now, um, I found on my phone I did need to remove, remove my protective case to allow it to get a good connection. Um, but I say, if you want to use then the USB extension cable, of course, that can make it work more like sort of a, a standalone unit where you can actually just move it around uh, independent of your phone itself. Now, at the moment, um, I don't think that Thermal Master have an Apple compatible device. Um, I guess mainly because the Apple one, of course, isn't using USB-C as, as its actual output port. Um, but I guess if, if Apple do move then to USB-C, I guess they will soon make one available for that as well. So specification wise, if, if we look at the specification for the camera, there are a few that you do need to be mindful um, when you are choosing or buying one of these devices. So most importantly, I, I think, is the resolution of the camera. Now, this camera boasts a native sensor resolution of 256 by 192 pixels. Now, now if this was a normal um, phone camera, you would think that would be very uh, a very low resolution. But in terms of IR cameras, that's actually quite good. And it will compete with some of much of the more expensive brands, and especially some of the cheaper brands, which sort of work on sort of 50 by 50 pixel resolution. Um, it, it is, of course, a lot better than that. Now, in this camera, the resolution can also be improved through software. So that Thermal Master companion app, it has a special X3 mode, and that uses a software enhancement of the image to effectively double the overall resolution that we get up to 512 by 384. And that actually works really well. and makes the image look sharper and clearer, but obviously then we're not actually getting more pixels for that. Now, secondly then, we do need to consider the accuracy of our camera. So, so the piece two um, states that the temperature accuracy is um, plus or minus 1.5 degrees centigrade. And that then is over a temperature range of minus 16 degrees centigrade to 600 degrees centigrade. Now, if you're working in Fahrenheit, that then is an accuracy of plus or minus uh, 2.7 Fahrenheit. And the temperature range then is minus 4 Fahrenheit all the way up to 1,112 Fahrenheit. So this is actually um, a pretty good accuracy rating. And again, it puts the P2 in, into the what would, I guess you would call it a quality device bracket. Now, the frame rate of the camera is, is also pretty good, running at 25 frames per second. Uh, some of these cameras do operate at quite low frame rates. Um, but this 25 frames per second then will give you a relatively smooth update of your image. And that, of course, is ideal then for scanning around either your circuit or, as we'll see later, sort of various other scenes. They've also managed to keep the power usage um, pretty low, and the camera only takes 0.3 watts. Um, so this means that it won't put too much extra drain on your phone battery if, if you're using it on your phone, uh, and you'll then be able to use it for prolonged periods. Um, it also means then, of course, with such a low power drain that you can simply use it over a standard USB cable and connect it up to your PC. There won't be any problems with your PC being able to drive this camera just over that normal port. So that's pretty much sort of the hardware specs that we need to be aware of. Um, but to use this camera, of course, I was just saying, we do need to use the, the Thermal Master camera app. So this is available on, on the App Store, um, and you can, of course, download it directly then from the Thermal um, Master website. And again, if you're going to go the PC route, then, of course, that's where you need to get hold of the software. So I'm going to be looking here at the Android app, and that, of course, gives us a pretty good range of features. Now, as I've already mentioned, we've got this X3 button, which uses something called the Razer XAI algorithm to enhance the standard resolution up from that standard 48 kilopixels up to 192 kilopixels. So this, as we've seen, it does make the images look quite a bit clearer. But as it's all done digitally, um, of course, we don't actually get any extra detail. It, it just makes the images look that little bit cleaner. Now, this is also true of the 15 times digital zoom. So you can um, 
just simply use your, your um, pinch and zoom on the um, image display itself. And that will allow you to do a digital zoom up to 15 times. Now, th this is great for focusing in on a particular section of your circuit board. But again, it is only magnifying the existing pixels rather than giving you an actual zoom where you'll get the full resolution um, spread over that smaller area. Now, with this camera, the minimum focusing distance that I measured here is, is around about 10 centimetres or, or 4 inches. Um, so that is a little bit far away if we're looking at very detailed electronic work. Um, so it can be a little bit more difficult to identify um, an individual surface mount. So if you have a number of sort of like small resistors or capacitors in a, in a, in a small area, um, it, it can be hard to see wh exactly which one of those is the one causing your heat um, problem. Um, but again, it, it will show you where the actual problem is. It's just you'll then have to sort of go in a bit deeper um, to exactly identify which particular um, component is, is giving you that issue. Uh, but having said that, I say the, the actual image quality is good and any of these hotspots, they are going to show up. Now to visualize the scene uh, more easily, the app does offer several color space modes. So um, you've got the normal range of colorized images. And again, if you've ever seen infrared camera images, you, you'll probably be very familiar with these. Uh, and these then use different colors and different spreads of color then to represent the hot and cold regions that you see. And again, some of these are, are, are just basically sort of various color variations. Uh, and there's one here at the end, which of course um, is labeled as medical. And that's probably the one which we're all most used to seeing. But there are then also a couple of more diagnostic centered themes which help you more easily see the problem areas. So, for example, this one here, uh, which I, I find very useful, it uses white for cold or normal temperature areas and then uses shades of red for those areas which are over a certain threshold value. And, and this then makes it very easy to spot hot areas and components in your circuit. It sort of takes away all of the sort of clutter of, of varying temperatures and really just allows you to focus in on what's actually really hot. Now, what, once you have found an area of interest, um, the app then, of course, offers you a number of options on how you actually can measure that temperature. Uh, and again, this is one of the um, real real advantages of using an infrared camera is we can actually then get an actual temperature measurement um, you just 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 by simply looking at things. So the simplest way of measuring then is just using the point measurement tool. Uh, and here you, you you simply add measurement points to the screen, and the app will give you a temperature reading for that point. So with this, you, you can, for example, put a point in the center of your screen and then move the camera around uh, to put that point into the exact place you want to get a reading for. You can then, of course, add more than one point. Uh, again, it becomes more, more difficult to use that feature if you're hand holding it. But if, for example, you put the camera in a tripod and have it looking at a, a circuit board from a fixed point, you can, of course, then use these multiple temperature points to see the changes re real time on a number of areas of the circuit. And again, that, that, that becomes another, another handy tool for seeing what happens when certain things are going on in your circuit. Now, some of the other tools that you can see here um, are um, image-based measurements, and, and that will then allow you to select an area in which you're interested, and the system will then report back maximum temperatures in that area and average temperatures. Uh, you can then use sort of squares and circle areas, or you can just draw a line across um, a, a part of your circuit, and it will then give you sort of almost like a temperature gradient across that line. So, so that really gives you a good set of tools to help you monitor and diagnose your circuits. As I say, excess heat does become sometimes a really good indicator that a particular component or, or IC has failed and is now just drawing too much current and sitting there not working in effect. But of course, there are um, other uses then of an infrared camera. So, so it's not just electronic circuits. And it, it, it actually becomes a great general purpose tool for anything that really involves the heat, um, heat generation or heat dissipation. 
So, so here in the UK, we, we don't have we don't have great extremes of weather, to be honest, but we do have um, prolonged cold spells. And with the cost of heating these days, it's, it's actually important to make sure that your house is well insulated. So here I'm looking at my own house in infrared and it really does show up where the heat in my house is actually escaping. As you can see, the windows and doors are the worst culprits, especially around the door frames and so on, and the window frames. Um, in, in my house, we do have pretty good wall insulation. So you can see here, although the walls are, are slightly uh, hotter than, than sort of um, the surrounding areas, um, it's not excessively. And you can see here, we do have good loft insulation, so the roof itself is not emitting too much heat. So that, that's, that's a good sign for us there. So, so in, in, in those sort of terms, uh, I think my house is reasonably well covered. We can, of course, then move inside the house. And of course, sort of heating and plumbing is another great application for these devices. So if you examine your heating or water pipes, you can actually see where the heat is going or, or not going. So if I, if I have a look in my airing cupboard here at my hot water tank, um, we have this lagged with an insulation um, jacket. And you can see that that is actually doing pretty good. So you can see here the, the heating pipes to the side, which are actually carrying the hot water up into this area. Though Those are, of course, hot because um, they are, of course, ha ha are metal um, carrying hot water. And you can see those then as, as the sort of glowing areas. But if we do look then at the actual... Um, water tank itself, you can see that that's not as hot. So it is actually keeping the temperature in quite well. So that gives us a good idea here. Um, I can also then start looking at some radiators. And you can see here, so, so these radiators are actually at the moment when I'm doing this, they're in the process of cooling down. But you can see there that we do have the hot water in those radiators um, rising up to the top. But it is actually getting to the actual top of the radiator. So we're not getting any sort of air pockets in those. If I do have a look at one of my ones here in the bathroom, and now this is um, where, where we can see sort of where the emissiveness of the material does, does come into, into play, where we're not getting a very good reading on the, on the chrome plated radiator here. But again, if we do have a look at the effect of the radiator on the wall behind, you can see that it's obviously been heating up the wall on these lower areas on this radiator. This top section of radiator here, you can see, that the, the background wall isn't quite so hot. So perhaps I may have a bit of an air pocket in that region. And again, I actually holding on to it, it does feel slightly colder than the rest of the radiator, when of course it should be the hottest point being at the top. So again, an, another area where we can use this infrared camera. And as I say, it, it's, it's quite an eye opener to actually sort of go around and seeing what you can actually do and see with it. So of course, the infrared imaging is used in medical diagnosis, uh, again, where you can now see sort of skin and body temperature variations. And this did actually come in very handy recently, where my wife did actually dislocate her shoulder. And as you can see here, um, the dislocated arm uh, is uh, much um, hotter than the non-dislocated arm. Uh, and again, that's simply just sort of all the swelling and healing going on there. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into using an infrared camera, both for sort of circuit analysis and fault finding, and then um, of other uses that you can find around the house and, and for other, other applications. Hopefully then it's also given you a bit of an insight into this Thermal Master P2, uh, which again, it is, is a really handy device. Um, I really do like the form factor of it where you can just simply plug it into your mobile phone and instantly turn that into a thermal camera. And again, the addition then of that extension lead just gives you that extra bit of flexibility on how you use it. And again, really good um, quality product, good resolution, good fault finding um, features, and I'm very pleased to have had a chance to look at it. So if you find this video useful, please do consider clicking that subscribe button, uh, clicking the like button as well. Don't forget I do lots of videos on electronics, um, consoles, gaming, modding, and making. So do look out for those. I look forward to seeing you again in another video very soon, and bye for now. For more game programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website.